So if you have a business that needs to get high quality appointments in order to win more clients, then a video sales letter or a VSL funnel is the best type of sales funnel that you can create to get leads, appointments, and clients predictably every single month in your business. So in this video, I'm going to go through how to actually build a VSL funnel. And even if you already have a VSL funnel, I'll go through some tips that you could use to split test your current funnel against some of these tips to see if you can increase your conversion rates. So the first thing you need to create a VSL funnel is of course, funnel building software. So there's all kinds of different tools that you can use. And if you want to use the tool that I use, and 80% of my clients use that tool is Kartra. I'll include a link in the description of this video where you can sign up for them and also get a little bit of a discount as well. Now, once you've got your funnel building software, the next thing you need to do is start building the actual funnel pages. So there are five pages in total. The first page that you need to have is what's called an opt-in page. So this is an example of what my opt-in page looks like. And there's a few things you want to do on your opt-in page to get the most conversions. So the most important thing that affects the conversion rate on your opt-in page is the title and then the subtitle. But more than anything else, it's really the title uh, and, the, and the subtitle is more just a continuation of the title. So this is the most important thing that affects the conversion rate. So in the title and subtitle that you have on your opt-in page, you want to first of all be specific with a specific tangible outcome that you can get for your potential clients. So in my business, I help other business owners get more leads and appointments. So notice I don't actually just say how to get more appointments. What I actually do is I say, learn how to get 10, 15, 30 or more appointments. And this is because I am being specific with the outcome. The more specific you are with the outcome that you can get for your potential clients, the easier it will be for them to visualize the result. And when they visualize the result, they will be more excited because they can actually see the possibility of what would happen in their business if they achieve that specific result. But if you're generic and you just say something like more, it can still work but it won't be as exciting to people as a specific result, which they can very easily visualize. Because if you just use the word more or increase or something like that, it doesn't really give them anything to imagine. So you want to make sure you're as specific as possible. Other ways you can be specific is with a percentage increase. So for some clients that are in financial services, I've gone through how to get 10%, 15% or 30% more income in retirement. So that's another way that you could be specific, or you could also say how to double your wealth in retirement time and that's something else you could do. And again, you just want to do things that make it easy for people to visualize the result. And that's all for the title. And then for the subtitle, what you want to do is you want to go through what are some of the problems that they avoid if they work with you. So for example, a lot of the people that I speak to, they are either cold calling or they're going to networking events or they're getting leads and appointments through referrals and they're tired of using those tactics and they're looking for something better. So that's exactly why on my opt-in page, I say you can do this without cold calling, without without networking, without relying on referrals or any of that stuff. So in your business, what are some things that people have tried and they're trying to avoid because maybe they don't work very well or they're just looking for something better. So in here, you just wanna include the problems that they can avoid. And something else you want to keep in mind is also to create curiosity. So I actually learned this originally from Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels and he said one of the number one things that you can do to get conversions on your opt-in page is to create curiosity. And that's why I don't actually tell people what the solution is until they actually enter their name and email. Uh, if I was to actually say something like learn how to get 10, 15, 30 or more appointments with Facebook ads or with SEO or with TikTok ads or with whatever it might be in here, that kills the curiosity because I'm actually telling people what the answer is. So you don't want to give too much away. You want to make sure that you have some sort of curiosity element to get people interested in learning what that solution is. Another way that I've done this for other clients is in the subtitle, instead of saying without this or that, what I say is I have the title and then in the subtitle, I say something like by making one simple change to your finances or to your health or to whatever it might be. So that phrase making one simple change again creates curiosity. We're not telling people what that change is, but we are telling them it is one simple change and they're going to wonder what is that change and that's going to motivate them to want to enter their name and email in order to find out. The other thing that I recommend that you do is that you also split test this page with other versions of the page. So this is because sometimes you may find that little tweaks on the page can get you better results. 
So some of the things that I've split tested in the past is for example, this opt-in form. So on landing pages in the past, I would actually have a button. So when they click on the button that said, watch the video, they will click on that and then it would open up an opt-in form. But then I tested it without the button and just having the form on the page. And I found that I got a better conversion rate with the form directly on the page. So that's just one example of one little tweak that I made on the opt-in page to get more conversions. Another thing that I tested more recently was the word predictable. So I wondered, you know, would it be better to say the word predictable or would it be better to say the word qualified? So get more qualified appointments. And I found that the word predictable actually got better conversions. So that means people were more interested in the predictability part, uh, which means getting appointments every single month on a predictable basis. They were more interested in that when it came compared to the word qualified. So that's something else that I didn't know. And I only learned that through split testing. So wherever possible, it's a good idea to just keep split testing your different pages in your funnel to see if you can get better conversions. And even if what you have is already working. So for example, before I split tested these uh, small things on the page, it was already converting, but I just wondered if I could get even more conversions. And that was the whole point of, of split testing it. So other things you could split test is for example, having the logo or not having the logo. For some clients, we found that they get better results without the logo. Other things you can split test is having this uh, these bullet points here and an image here. Uh, for some clients, they get better results. Other clients, they don't. Uh, other clients, they just get better results just with a simple page without any of that stuff. Then there's also the color of the buttons. That's something else you can split test. So there's a lot of small things that you could split test in order to figure out what gets you the best possible conversions for this page. And also the last thing I want to mention about the opt-in page is notice how it's very simple. So it doesn't use any fancy graphics. There's no fancy backgrounds or images or videos or anything like that. Uh, the reason for that is twofold. Number one is because I've also tested this and the simpler the landing page is, the better the conversion rate is. Uh, and I found that in pretty much every single split test that I've done, I've tested very, very fancy landing pages and very simple landing pages like this one. And the simple landing page has always converted better. The second reason is because it helps the page load faster as well. So if you have more images, more videos, more, uh, you know, background images and just more graphics and things like that, that can slow down the time it takes for the page to load. And it's been well tested that the faster the page loads, the more conversions that you can get. So anything you can do to increase the landing page speed, that will help you improve your conversion rate. So this is the first page you want to have on your VSL sales funnel. So the second page or the second stage of the funnel is after people enter their name and email, I recommend that you send them to this page, which is your video page. So on the video page, uh, as the name suggests, you would have your video sales letter. So this is where people can go through and watch your video sales letter. And I have another video on YouTube, which I will include a link to, which goes through how to create that video sales letter in more detail. Uh, but the point is you want to have a page where people can watch a video. So that they can be educated as to how to solve the problem that they have. So for example, for the leads that I get, they're looking to get more appointments, right? So when they watch this video, it will go through step-by-step step how to solve this problem. And it will go through what other people are doing to solve that problem or what other alternative solutions there are to solve that problem. And then it will go through why this strategy, the strategy that we use is a lot more effective compared to those other solutions. So at each step in the process, we are educating them as to why this solution or this strategy is better than other alternative solutions. And then at the end of the video, you want to have a call to action where people can get faster results or get better results by working with you rather than do everything themselves. So someone could go through this video and try to implement everything I teach in this video themselves. And I have had people do that in the past, but the reality is they still might make some mistakes, which is why it can be helpful to have an expert or someone that you can work with to help you make sure that you avoid mistakes and also show you and tell you exactly what it is that you need to do to get the fastest possible results. So in your case, in your video, you want to give people the option to also work with you to actually implement the strategy that you go through in your video sales letter. And that's why we have here um, some text that says step one, watch the video, or watch the free training. And then step two, if you like what you hear, let's talk and they can click here to schedule a call. Also on this page, you can also split test different things to see what works better. So for some clients, for example, uh, instead of having a link to the schedule call page or the application page, we actually have the application 
application page on this video page itself. And for some clients that converts better, for other clients it doesn't. So the only way to know for sure is to test it and see what works better for you. For other clients, what we've also done is we've split tested having this uh, link or the application form at the bottom. And then for other clients, we put it at the top. So actually there's a link to the application form at the top uh, because some people might be ready to just speak with you right now. And others, they actually might want to watch the video first before speaking with you. So everyone is a little bit different just depending on the type of business that you have. But that's something else that I've split tested for other clients that has worked better. So what you see now is what works better for me and my business. But just keep in mind that you can always split test little things on these pages to see if that gets you better results. The other thing that I've also tested more recently on this page is adding a chatbot here. So this is actually an AI chatbot, uh, which appears after someone goes on this page after a minute or two. So it doesn't appear straight away. But after a few minutes after they started to watch the video, I've made this AI chatbot appear, which allows people to ask questions and get instant answers. So I have another video as well on how to create an AI chatbot like this. You can create one very easily in as little as five minutes. And what's really cool about this AI chatbot is that it's actually trained on your data. So when people answer questions in here, it's not just going to give them random answers. It's going to give them answers based on the sales training and the marketing material that I've given the AI chatbot. So it basically understands my business. It's kind of like having a virtual AI sales assistant in your business that can answer questions and help you convert more of your leads into appointments and into clients. So this is something else uh, that I've recently started testing on the video page and something else that I would recommend that you implement as well. And again, if you want to learn more about how to do that, just check out the video I've recorded on how to create AI chatbots. And I'll include a link in this video where you can check it out. So the next page after someone watches the video is for them to schedule a call or to apply to work with you. Now you could link to a schedule call page in Calendly or you could just link to an application page depending on which one you want to do first. Uh, for my business, I prefer to do the application page first because I found that that gets me better quality appointments. Uh, one of the reasons for getting better quality appointments is because well, the very first question in the application form is the price or their budget. So I make sure that they have the budget uh, to work with me before they actually go ahead and schedule a call with me. So if someone doesn't have the budget to work with me, then they just won't fill out this form. So this just helps me avoid wasting time speaking to people that are not going to have the budget to work with me in the first place. So in your case, you could do something similar. You could ask them what is their budget or which one of your packages are they interested in? And you can have the price right there and there. And then you can let people actually choose before the call if they're comfortable with that price. So for example, with some of the accounting firms that I work with, they actually put their pricing on the application form so that people know what it is upfront and they can select whether they are comfortable with paying that amount. And then on the application form, what I recommend that you also do is you make this multiple choice or make it as easy as possible to fill out. So you don't want to have uh, lots and lots of questions where people actually have to type out their answer because that can make it harder for the form to fill out. And also, since a lot of leads these days are using their mobile phones or their cell phones when it comes to going through this funnel, if they have to fill out all this text from their phone, it can be a little bit un uncomfortable and you'll find that you'll get less conversions. So that's why we just make the application form very simple to fill out. Uh, all of the questions I use is our multiple choice. And the questions that are not multiple choice are uh, these ones here. So we have the website, which by the way is optional. So they don't have to fill it in if they don't want to. And then we just have their name and their email address. And what's really cool about Kartra is that it actually remembers their name and the email address from when they filled it in in the opt-in form. So whenever someone fills in a form on Kartra, such as on this page here, it will automatically pre-fill the form in uh, elsewhere, anywhere else you use another form. So these fields, the name and the email will actually already be filled in when someone gets to this page because they've filled it in previously on the opt-in page here. So that's just a nice little touch or a nice little feature that I like that you get with, with Kartra. Uh, and then once they click submit, they'll be redirected to your Calendly page. And this is just a simple Calendly page. So this is an example of what my Calendly page looks like. And people can just go ahead and choose a day and time to schedule a call in your calendar. If you also uh, use a piece of software like Calendly, uh, this is what I use, calendly.com. Uh, so you could use Calendly as well, or you could use whatever scheduling tool you feel most comfortable with. But personally, I think Calendly is the best. Uh, so that's why I use it. And as a side note, if you also want to increase your show up rate when people schedule a call with you inside of your calendar, make sure that you also turn on email notifications and text notifications so people are notified of the call before they actually go ahead and have it. And then finally, after they schedule a call, you can automatically redirect them to the call confirmation page. So this page is designed to do two things. Number one, it's designed to let them know that, you know, everything's done, the call has been confirmed and that they'll also receive a calendar invitation via email. And the second thing it's designed to do is to get them to consume more content. So the first thing 
thing we want them to do is watch our video sales letter, which is called the, the free masterclass training, but it's basically just another word for the video sales letter. And we want to make sure that they've watched this if they haven't already. So sometimes I do get some leads that they skip the video and they just jump straight to the application form. But I want to speak with people only if they've watched the video, because I find that when they watch the video, the quality of the call is much higher and there's a much higher chance that they actually convert into a client. So that's why, again, I say watch our free masterclass training if you haven't already, because this will go through how the strategy works in more detail. So if they have skipped it, they now have another opportunity to go back and watch the video. What I also do is I have some links to client case studies and success stories. Uh, this is to build up some social proof. And again, this can help you with the conversion rate once you speak to the lead on an appointment. And then finally, I've also added links to my YouTube channel because I found that the more content that someone consumes, uh, the higher the chances are that they will convert into a client. And actually, this isn't just uh, what I found, but this actually correlates with a study that Google did many years ago called the Zero Moment of Truth. And in short, they found that the more content someone consumes before they actually reach out to work with you, the higher the chances are that they will convert into a client. So on your thank you page, you don't just want to say, hey, your call is confirmed and that's it, but you actually want to give them more information that they can look over before the call because that will significantly increase the chances that they number one, show up for the call and number two, that they convert on the call. So you definitely want to do that in the final step of your sales funnel. Now, these five pages that I've gone through are just the funnel pages, but there's also some things that happen behind the scenes to also increase the conversion rate. So for example, you might get someone that goes to the opt-in page, uh, but they don't actually convert and go to the video page. So this is where you could run retargeting ads to retarget those people that haven't converted, or you could get people that go to the video page, but they don't actually schedule a call with you. So that's where you would have follow-up emails to automatically get those leads that haven't converted yet, that haven't maybe watched the video or maybe have watched the video, but they haven't actually scheduled a call. You can have follow-up emails designed to convert those leads. And even after they do schedule a call in your calendar on the call confirmation page, I still recommend having some follow-up emails uh, just to build up some anticipation of the call. So one of the emails I send out is an email where they can have links to uh, you know more information about our services, our client case studies, our results, uh, because let's just say they go to this page, but they don't actually have the time to click on these links right now. I basically send them a copy of what it says here in an email so that they can go through it whenever they get more time. And like I mentioned earlier, it can also help to have the email reminders and the text reminders to increase the show up rate of the calls that you get. So now that you've got the sales funnel up and running, the next logical question is, how do you get more people to go into the sales funnel? Because the reality is the more people that you get going into the sales funnel at the start, the more leads, appointments and clients that you'll get at the end of it. So a lot of the time it becomes a bit of a numbers game. So if you want to learn how to get the most amount of leads possible into your sales funnel in ways that are either free or paid, then check out the video that I've recorded myself here because it actually goes through how to do that using the Pareto principle. So when you watch this video in step four of this video, you'll actually see what are the strategies that you can use to get leads going into your funnel in a way that is predictable, automated, scalable, and profitable. So if you wanna watch this video and actually go through the funnel yourself and see how it works and actually see what the follow-up emails look like and just see a real life working example of how all the different pieces of the VSL funnel fit together, then just click the link in the description of this video to watch my video sales letter to see how it all works in action. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.